today class. In the previous videos, we have introduced a brief background of Chinese medicine and acupuncture. In this video, we're going to continue the discussion on the history. In this video, we're going to introduce some of the accomplishments of Chinese medicine. So for these thousands of years, what has, what has been achieved? In order to discuss the accomplishments of Chinese medicine, we have to get to know a little bit about the history of China. The brief history of China will help us to answer one of our questions. Why is Chinese medicine unique? There are at least three key factors that may answer this question. The first one is the unity of this country. China has have been kept unity for thousands of years. The second is China hasn't been colonized or, or, or at least hasn't been fully colonized. Although some of the cities, some of the provinces has been colonized, but the main parts of China hasn't been colonized. So the culture has been kept as it is. We always say that China has a history of four or five thousand years. Where does that five thousand years come from? It is actually actually more than four thousand years. So it was it was counted from two thousand BC until today. The Chinese culture has the tradition of keeping history. So all these dynastics we have a very detailed documents. Even dynastics means different imperial, fam imperial families. So it only refers to different imperial family in, authority, in, in charge of the country. Xia dynasty, Shang dynasty, Zhou dynasty. As you can see, I put it three at the beginning, about three to four thousand years ago. And then from Qin Dynasty, I highlighted the yellow, I highlighted as the, the yellow background, and then afterwards, all the same. The reason why we highlighted here is because something has changed from Qin Dynasty, Xia, Shang, so these three dynastic, one, two, three. At that time, China was similar to USA, the country was consisted of different states. They have the different continent, different boundary, but different, they're all Chinese, but they consist of different states. They have different authority in the states from Qin Dynasty. That's where the first emperor came from. Qin Dynasty, the emperor united the whole China. So he united the whole China and he united the power. He centralized the power. He took all the power back to the government. So from Qin Dynasty until today, there's, there's only one authority in China. There's only one government in China. There's no states. The states have to listen to the, gov to the central government. That's from Qin Dynasty. Qin Dynasty is about 2,200 years ago. From Qin Dynasty, the language, the Chinese language, has been formalized as one official language until today. That's why when we study acupuncture, such as our classics, were from this era. And how, we, how can we read the, the text, the characters here? That's because from these eras, the language has been kept until today. So we can read the medical books from Qin Dynasty. That's the, the key medical books in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. From Qin Dynasty, the flow comes to Han Dynasty. That's Dr. Zhang Zhongjing, we will introduce later one of the most 
phenomenal daughter in Chinese medicine history. The daughter from Han Dynasty, Dr. Zhang, has controlled the Chinese medicine until today from 2000 AD, it's from 200 AD until today. So this is uh, one of the most pheno phenomenal dynasty in Chinese medicine. Afterwards, go to three kingdoms, Qin Dynasty, Northern and Southern Dynasty, Sui Dynasty, Han Dynasty, and Song Dynasty. There were many achieve achievements in these two dynasties. One of the reasons is because the economy in Tang and Song Dynasty were, were very good, so which helped the development of Chinese medicine. And later goes to the Yuan Dynasty, Ming Dynasty, Qin Dynasty. This is very close to us now, and also there are there were a lot of wars in China. You will see when we discuss to Qin Dynasty why Chinese medicine has something have changed in Chinese medicine. After Qin Dynasty, the imperial family has stopped. The imperial flow has stopped. So from the beginning until Qin Dynasty. There were emperor. There were emperors. There was the the country was in charge of the in, imperial family. And from Qin, after Qin Dynasty, the China become republic. The country has transformed to Republic of China. From 1912 to 1949, and the Republic of China. Change the name. The, 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 the history of China changed change the name to People's Republic of China. So what happened to here? These two titles were quite similar. Republic of China and People's Republic of China. The Republic of China was the authority of the whole country. So the whole country were was in charge of the Republic of China between 1912 to 1949. And because of the war, they, the authority lose, lost the war. The people of the Republic of China, these two are actually different parties. The Republic of China moved to Taiwan here. And the, and the com community party took over the authority, controlled the, the whole China. So that's where the arguments come from. Are there two China or one China? But no matter, we, we not focus on the politics, we focus on the culture. So you will know from 4,000 years ago until today, the culture has been kept and when we introduce the medical books, when we say Han Dynasty, though you will know that's in this period. When we talk about Tang Dynasty, you will know that's in this period. What happens in this period? So you can refer back to this below, this chat. From the introduction, we will already know that Chinese medicine has been constantly practiced for at least thousands of years. How do you know? Where are the evidence? So we refer back to the literature books. There was one book named Zhou Li. Zhou Li. Zhou is the Zhou Dynasty. So if you don't remember when was the Zhou Dynasty, you can refer back to the previous slides. It was about 3000 years ago. Li was the rules or etiquette. So in this book, the etiquettes of Zhou Dynasty were recorded. There are information there there was information on what on the etiquettes of marriage, of the funeral, what's the protocols of funeral, what's the rules of marriage and how the 
people behave at that time. All, all this information were recorded in solely. There was one piece of information on daughters. It described that daughters are differentiated into different specialities. Someone focused on diet. Someone focused on internal and external diseases. Someone focused on traumatic diseases. Someone focused on that. So the, the one focused on diet was very similar to the dietitian. The one focused on internal and external diseases are very similar to the general practice, uh, general, the physicians and also the dermatologists, traumatic diseases and that. From here, we will already know 3,000 years ago, Chinese medicine separates different specialties. In order to have different special specialities, medicine has, has to be developed to a certain stage. We don't know how long the Chinese medicine has de developed, but in order to have these different specialties, there must be some development to this field. For example, this is very similar to the, conven the conventional medicine. After graduating from the medical school, you're going to be the general practitioners. After a few years study, you can focus on one specialty. So that's become specialist. You see the from general practice and specialties to specific fields, you need there this there will require some development in between, which means the Chinese medicine must have been practiced before Zhou Dynasty. Unfortunately, we don't have any evidence before Zhou Dynasty because that was quite an old Asian time and we, we still haven't found the, the evidence, the physical evidence of those information. The second book, so from the his historical accomplishments, we're going to use a few books, a few stories to introduce Chinese medicine. From these books, from these stories, we will know from different experts to understand Chinese medicine. Another book, Lie Zi. Lie Zi it was a, also a literature book. It was written to about 2,500 years ago. In this book, it records one story of Bian Chue, actually several stories of Bian Chue. Bian Chue was one of the most famous Chinese medicine practitioner in Chinese medicine history. We are going to introduce three stories of Bian Chue. Bian Chue and Toxic One was the last, last story we're going to introduce. So the first, first story of Bian Chue. Bian Chue got three siblings. His elder brother, his middle brother, and himself were all Chinese medicine practitioners. However, Bian Chue was the most famous daughter. As when the neighbors, when they, his neighbors asked Bian Chue, among your brothers, three of you, who was the best one? Yin Chue said, his elder brother was the best one. And then further, he explained the reason. Yin Chue was the most famous one in the history. But his brother, Yin Chue said, his brother was the better one. The reason Yin Chue explained that his brother, in during the treatments, his brother always focused on prevention. So when his brother see a mild changes of the patient, he realized that the patient may develop into a severe diseases. So interventions will be applied on this patient. His brother 
will advise the the patient to use some to have some changes in the lifestyle, in the diets or physical exercises to prevent diseases. So his he thought that his brother always treat the disease in very early stage for prevention. So this is another thought in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Prevention is very important. At least we can say prevention is as important as treatment. So in our practice, don't always focus on treatments. We don't wait until the patient becomes sick and then we, we try to heal the disease. We need to try to prevent the disease. Second story from Bian Chue. Dr. Bian Chue, he was very famous, so he he saw the the king in the states. The first time he saw the he the first time he met the king. The name of the king was Cai, so he says Cai Cai King Cai. He says. That you are you you are sick, and then the king was so angry because he was healthy. He, the king thought he was healthy, and now he says I'm sick. So he says no, I'm not sick, and Bianchi left. And then after ten days, Bianchi met the king again. Bianchi told the, the king says you were sick. You are sick. You need to have the treatments. If you don't have the treatments, the disease is going to develop worse. The king still can deny and he says, I'm not sick. And at this time, the king says that the doctors always want to treat some, pa some patients who is healthy and don't convince others. The healthy the health of the patient is from their treatments, which is not because they are healthy. So they convince a healthy person to be sick and then they apply the treatments. After that, obviously the healthy person is still healthy. But in at that time the doctors will claim that that's from their con contribution. So King Tsai have this con conclusion and he was so unhappy. The third time, after a few days, Dr. Bian Chue met King Cai again. Bian Chue still said that you are sick, you have to have the treatment now. The king refused again. On the fourth time that Bian Chue met the king, Bian Chue didn't say anything and turned away. At this time, the king was confused. Because for the previous three times, you said, I am sick. You asked me to have a treatment. And now, you don't even mention one word. So the king was confused. And the king asked his servants to ask Bian Quan, what's the reason? Bian Quan said, at the first time I met, when I met the king, I knew that the disease is in the superficial level of the skin. At that time, we can use therapeutic massage or trainer to assist. The second time when I met the king, I see the disease become deeper, go to the skin or below the skin, goes to the muscles. At this time, we can use acupuncture, we can use the masturbation to heal, to heal the disease. On the third time when I met the king, I see that the disease has developed into the, the internal organs. At this stage, we still can use the herbal medicine to treat the disease. The king can be healed. But on the fourth time, I saw that the disease had developed, have developed to Gao Huang. In future, when we study the theory, we will know where was Gao Huang, the, the different parts of the body. So he said, when I saw that the disease 
has developed into the area. I believe there's no treatment for this. So the, the servant of the king reported back to the king. And after 10 days from the story, the king becomes sick. And after a few days, the king passed away. So from this story, it tells us still the prevention is very important. For Chinese semester, we always focus on prevention. And also our, from different therapeutic approaches, herbal medicine, acupuncture, masturbation, therapeutic massage, we use these different techniques for different situations. So you can see from this you can see from this story. The last story we're going to talk about Dr. Bian Chi and the toxic one. The toxic one in this book, because this is not a medical book, this is a literature book. So it didn't record what what were the ingredients. So nowadays we don't know the ingredients of this toxic one from this story Bian Chi. But this book has recorded the functions of the toxic one. Bian Chi will request we will request patient to drink the toxic one before the surgery. After drinking the toxic one, the patient will fall asleep. And then after the surgery, Bian Chi will make the patient drink the toxic one again. And then the patient will, will wake up. So this is a very brief story, not really a story, just an introduction of the story. From this story, you will see the anesthetic thoughts. For two, from 2,500 years ago in the literature, Chinese medicine already have the thoughts of anesthetics for surgery. That can be seen from Bian Chi's story. When the time developed to the Qin Dynasty, so that's about 2,200 years ago to 2,000 years ago. In Qin Dynasty, there were some bamboo slips on earth in China. Where does the bamboo slip come from? This is related to the culture. The Chinese culture see the funeral very importantly. So after the, their family passed away, around the coffin, or even in the coffin, they will put something that the, the family going to, will use during when they are still alive, such as the utensils, or the, the books, or other clothes, or whatever, depends on how wealthy the family is. So they will put something in the in the tomb. And after thousands of years now, sometimes accidentally we found the tomb and then we found these bamboos. These bamboo slips and sometimes the wooden slips where the the character will, will written on. So there was one tomb in Qin Dynasty on Earth in China. And from the bamboo slip, we see the records of Li Qian Shuo. Li Qian Shuo. Li means pandemic. Qian means movement. Shuo is the, the, the house or the mansion. So this is actually a quarantine hospital for leprosy. This was the first records in the world of quarantine hospitals. At that time, the Chinese medicine doctors already knew that leprosy, leprosy is a human-to-human -human transmission diseases. You have to quarantine patients in specific areas. So that's where they keep the patient. Li Qianshuo. Another phenomenal Achievements in Chinese medicine is the medical reports. This is a medical report of forensic medicine. 
of in forensic medicine in this record, it clear it clearly describes that what need to be recorded in the report. For example, the approximate age, the approximate death time, the approximate height of the patient, the possible cause of the death, and the environment around the the, the scene. So these are all need to be recorded in the medical file in forensic medicine. This this format, this medical file format was the earliest records in medical fields worldwide. That's also why nowadays we can see a lot of medical records in Chinese medicine, in acupuncture. That's, that's another proof that Chinese medicine has been constantly practiced for thousands, thousands of years. Because you can see, no has to be feng zheng si, no has to be the forensic records, but the medical records for patients. As we know, that's Dr. Bian Chue. It's quite a famous figure in the Chinese medicine history. About 2,500 years ago, Dr. Bian Chue, he set up a few principles in his practice for the patients. So he will he will try his best to see the patients. He also require the patients to follow some of the principles. One of the principles he set up was that if the patient believe in spiritual, he won't treat that kind of patient. That's, that's the from the crow he says no treatment to the patients who believe in spiritual. When we see the quotes from this perspective, we will understand that Chinese medicine at this period, 2,500 years ago, we already se separate from the spiritual and medicine. So Chinese medicine, we own, in Chinese medicine, in the practice, we only keep the medical science. So this, is, this was another evidence to Proof, proof that there were there was no spiritual perspective in Chinese medicine. Ma Wang Dui Han Tong. Ma Wang Dui is the location, is the area. For example, Johannesburg, so just the name of the area. Han means the dynasty. Tong. So this tone was buried in Han Dynasty. It's about 2,200 years ago. This was one of the most important discovery in Chinese medicine. Because in this term, there are many medical works were unearthed from this term. Just to mention a few, Zhu Bi Shi Yi Mai Jiu Jing. Zhu means the foot, Bi means the arm. Shi Yi 11, my Jiu, House, Most Passion, Classic. So this book says 11 meridians. It's the, the menu of Most Passion for 11 meridians. These 11 meridians this was, were these two distributed in the arm and the foot. From this book, we will understand that the Chinese medicine was not achieved in one day. It had constantly developed it has been constantly constantly developed during the period. The reason why we have this conclusion when we study in future you will know that we we have 12 main meridians, we have 8 extra meridians. So from 11 meridian, 11, to 12 plus 8, or to 12 or 14 meridians, you will 
understand why we have these all these different numbers in future when you study the meridians. From 11 to 14 of to 12, you will see the developments from less to more. So as the year develops, we we will gain more and more experience, more and more knowledge in Chinese medicine. Another book in this in this term, Tai Chan Shu, Tai Chan. Tai is the fatal, Chan is, is delivery, Shu is the book. So this was the first books, the first monograph on of step chicks. This is a, this this was very important and very meaningful. The reason is the mo a monograph on women's diseases that's not common in in the past. This is the this this is the first one in Chinese medicine. Dao Yin Tu, Dao Yin Tu Tu is the the image, Dao Yin is kind of exercise. So in this exercise, in this images, it demonstrates different exercising posture. This is the Dao Yin Tu. You can see this Dao Yin Tu in our museum on the first floor of the homeopathy center, health center. So we have this duplicate replicas in the museum. This is also the first colors demonstration image. The next book we're going to mention is Huang Di Nei Jin. Huang Di Nei Jin was one of the most important books in Chinese medicine. Huang Di Nei Jin is one of the classic, the first classic, and also from Huang Di Nei Jing. Huang Di Nei Jing were written about 2000 to 2500 years ago. Huang Di Nei Jing have a lot of achievements in this book. There, there are 162 articles in this book. It describes the, the, the religion. Or the spiritual, set it it symbolize the religion or the spiritual separated from Chinese medicine and the religion. So, which means after this book, there was no spiritual aspects, no religion in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. In Chinese medicine, we only keep the medical aspects. The scientific aspects, the medical aspects in Chinese medicine that Huang Di Nei Jin symbolize. The reason is because Huang Di Nei Jin describes all medical with no spiritual. In the past, when we studied the, the history, when we discussed in detail from the years, years, you will know where does the Chinese medicine come from. At the beginning, we, com we confuse the spiritual, the religion, and medical. But from Huang Di Nei Jing, we separate them. Which means the Chinese medicine has been separated from the religion, from the spiritual aspects for at least 2,500 years. And there were also the basic theory, the one, the theory we are going to learn in acupuncture were from Huang Di Nei Jing. The meridian, the acupoints, that we are going to learn, they are going to learn in the second year with, uh, from Huang Di Nei Jing. So the, the knowledge was two, more than 2,000 years ago. We also record different procedures. These are the first procedure, procedures of this kind in medical field. This is an, an example of the bamboo slip. The bamboo so the character will written on the bamboo, and then they tie together the row. It becomes the volume of the book, or a chapter of the book depends on the how how long the 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 book is. 
自 mistreat or heal by being a hunger diseases by a hunger being diseases from a formula. So this book actually is a formula book, a prescription book, recorded uh, the treatment for hunger diseases. In this book, we recorded all different kinds of diseases, all, all different kinds of common diseases. So from here, you will see from Huang Di Nei Jin, from 2,500 years ago, Chinese medicine have a very complete theory. And as the time develop, we also develop into formula to treat the prescriptions. The theory, the applications, and the formula, the prescription, the herbs, how to treat the diseases. So that's the development for love. Because of the time, we're going to discuss the next period about 108,000 years ago, Han Dynasty, in the next video. Thank you for your attention.